Uh, hi, I'm Kate Ashton, and you are at Art on 30th, and I am here with Kirby Kendrick. And today we're going to find out a little bit about Kirby as an artist. I had the pleasure of meeting Kirby years ago when I first opened this business. Uh, one of my jurors was saying, now you need to get to know Kirby Kendrick. I said, who's that? And you just happened to be in the restaurant at the same time. I and was. And when you came walking out, she goes, there she is. Here, I'll introduce you. So that's when I first met you. I Kirby. remember. Do you really? I do remember. It was with Bread and Sea yes. advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> it was at Bread and Sea. It was uh -huh. a long time yeah. ago. Thank you for remembering, because I sure remembered you. Um, I can't wait to talk to you about your art today. When did you first say to yourself, I'm an artist? Well, it's a great story, but I, I was uh, ill and I was in the hospital mm. and uh, a pretty serious illness, breast cancer. And one of my friends in Santa Fe, New Mexico came with a, a pack of six Crayolas and a sketchbook. And I had never even taken an art lesson before. And I'd, I studied a little art history in college, but no art studio art. And I started coloring the flowers and the doctor's ties, which were the only things that had any color. And I thought, I love this. So mm -hmm. I came home, painted all my walls like Matisse, because I was homebound for a while. And I thought, I love this so much. I went, I've got to go to art school. So then I went to New York and I studied classical art for three years. Wow. And that's what happened. Wow. All started with, with Crayolas? Did you All say Crayolas? All started with Crayolas, a pack yeah. of six Crayolas. Six? Only mm -hmm. six? Only six. And out of something that was a negative state, you know, an illness. Mm -hmm. But look what came from it. That was your gift for the it, illness? It was. Wow. Now, behind us, you can see there's some serious color back here. <laughs> so those Crayolas have lasted quite a while. <laughs> Um, I'm, you know, obviously this is a bright, bold color palette. Yes. What's your favorite color palette and why? Yellow. I really love yellow and reds and the blues with it. Um, it, it makes me happy. It's uh, joyous. It, it's full of uh, reminiscences of nature and, and design. It's yellow. And Van Gogh said that you can never get enough yellow in a painting. So I took him at his word. Liquid sunshine. <laughs> love it, love it. Uh -huh. Gotta love it. Now, you have a home in Santa Fe as well, don't you? Yes, and a studio there. And I've been, uh, been there for maybe 30 years wow. uh, and painted. And uh, yes. How has that influenced your art? A lot. The yellow, because of the adobe, the the desert, it, it, I never really thought about that, but it certainly has influenced it to the, going to the abstract. In Santa Fe, I painted mainly Southwestern mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, art, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I came to Art on 30th, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and am painting abstract now. Amen, mm -hmm. love that abstract. <laughs> um, now, in addition, you also do a blog, don't you? I do. I have a blog that uh, you can see on my website, and it's really a teaching blog. It's about just very short uh, uh, vignettes of famous artists mm -hmm. and very uh, lots of their images, mm -hmm. and I mean maybe two paragraphs, but the high points. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. I like to do that. Excellent. Now, you, you love to study art and artists, don't you? Yes. Talk to me about that. Well, I like to study, and I've found that a, a, most artists do this. We find an artist that we love, and we incorporate some of their ideas, some of their thoughts, techniques into our art, and it's always our own art. I, I really feel like, don't you feel like, Kate, we can never drift far away from our own style, no matter what That's we true. do. That's true. I'm a deep believer in we can only paint who we are. That's <laughs> it. Um, and influenced by many people, but the truth is only who we are, because that's really all we have. That's right. That's, all we have. that's right. It's going to yeah. come out uh, with our own personality, with our own palette, our own sense of design. Mm -hmm. Speaking of personality and palette, of these three pieces behind me, which one is your favorite? 
Well, I really like all of them and I selected these to show you because um, this is an older piece and it's called Trouble Cometh and it was about the 19, in the 1900s, the dust, dust storm mm -hmm. in uh, the prairie. And this was actually a photograph, but all this orange was black smoke mm. coming to this little farmhouse. Mm. But I don't like to paint black, so hence it's yellow <laughs> and orange, but a little more realistic, impressionistic really. And then these are two, uh, this was uh, my another one that is little, little bit uh, less abstract than this. For instance, uh, this painting is called Arabesque because I was thinking about Matisse, mm. and Matisse has tons of which is the symbol like this, tons of arabesques in his paintings. So if you look in here closely, you'll see lots of arabesques. Mm. This was, um, mm -hmm. I was studying Helen Frankenthaler and she poured her painting. She'd put canvas on the floor, mix up a bucket of paint with water and pour it on the canvas and then pick up one end and spread it around. It ran like a river. Mm -hmm. And we tried that here at Art on 30th and I just loved doing that. And that's what this is. So it's a poured painting. So there are three different very different types, but all with my favorite colors. I am seeing that now, Kirby. <laughs> I'm definitely seeing it. The first time I saw this piece, um, a bunch of us just, we just stood there and we stared at it and we, we were trying to give it the narrative that came for us. Uh -huh. And the first thing I thought of was the word royal, R-O-I-L, like the clouds are oh, royaling yes. and moving and I'm, I'm all caught up in that. and. It's a stunning piece. Oh, it's thank just you. just a stunning piece. Uh, the colors that you put, um, the idea of putting this bright orange with the black. So trouble's coming, but there's bright orange here. I know. So there's a little bit of like push-pull in the, in the old mm -hmm. kanuki up here. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a marvelous piece. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank now, you. I loved your title. How do you choose your titles for your artwork? Oh, the titles just come to me. Uh, for instance, Arabesque came because I was thinking about Matisse mm -hmm. and studying him. Um, and this piece is Serenity because it's the opposite of Arabesque. Arabesque is full of forms and patterns and swirls and this is calm, like a pouring. The pouring is a very calming process and it just seemed to bring serenity to my mind. Excellent. And then Trouble Cometh was I was imagining these people in this terrible predicament looking out the back door and seeing this. In mm. fact, I saw Ken Burns did a, a series on the dust storm and one of them was a recording of, an, of the grandmother and she was taking care of the grandchildren in a little farmhouse like this and she looked out the door and she, the kids were playing she said, Kids, get in the house. The end of the world's coming. <laughs> it, do, it would look like that, wouldn't it? It does. It, would it did. Like that. So it? ideas come from everywhere. Titles come from everywhere. Now, you mentioned this was deeply influenced by Hel Helen Frankenthal. Frankenthal. Because um, she did the poor. Did I say Frankenthaler? I meant Frankenthal. No, you said it right. You I said did. it right. Okay. I think you did. Um, who would you say, what artist would you say has influenced you the most in your career? Definitely Bonar and Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the Impressionists go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the classic artist, Titian, and I'll have to say even the cave artists because of their simplicity of design and the lines. Mm. They, they painted in lines, and I like to paint in lines. Mm. I draw in, my drawings are, um, outlines. They're mm -hmm. not shaded or anything. They're like cavemen drawings. Interesting. That's, that's a lot of different experiences. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. I painted a long time though. I and know I, you so have. I, I know you have. Now, I'm collecting I know. these experiences. In terms of a lifetime as an artist, you've painted a long time. How 
How much do you paint, let's say, in a day or a week? How much would you say you paint? Well, I do some kind of art mm -hmm. every day. I either research art and on the internet or I go look at art at a museum mm -hmm. or a gallery or I mm -hmm. do a drawing at a, sitting at lunch at waiting to meet people <laughs> like Kate. Uh, or some, talk about art all, every day, every day. Wow, so art is like this in it your is. life. It is, it is. Just completely. Oh, that's so beautiful. Art is yeah. founding. <laughs> art is founding. You know, um, in our lives, someone will make a comment about our art, and we never forget it. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking a positive comment. What's the, the comment that somebody made about your art, and you've never forgotten it? Oh, well... I think that it may have been for this painting mm -hmm. and a, a much older lady mm -hmm. was looking at it and she said something about that brought tears to her eyes. She was thinking about her grandmother mm -hmm. and I assume that her grandmother lived through the dust storm. Mm -hmm. that w it wasn't that long ago. Not really. So yeah, that, that really. really affected, that, that brought back a, an emotion to mm -hmm. her. That, that warmed my heart that it did mm -hmm. that for her. She just stepped right into the narrative of that piece. She did. She? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's why we're artists, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> Um, is there a certain time during the day that you prefer to paint or in the evening? I like to paint in the e uh, after lunch mm -hmm. because I find that in the morning I'm looking at art, I'm looking at books. I have a wonderful, uh, I've accumulated a wonderful art library mm -hmm. and I, I always am looking at art books in the morning with yeah. my coffee. You are utterly immersed in art, aren't you? I am utterly immersed with, with what I wake up, wh when I dress, I like to dress crazy, <laughs> <laughs> put things together. Um, food, I love, the, I love the complimentary colors in food. When I have something that's all green, like the other night we had artichokes and asparagus and I went, oh, we need something red. Had to go get a tomato. Wow. Isn't, that's an artist. That's an artist. I've got a couple more questions for you. You know, in your career, somebody always gives you some advice from time to time. What's the advice that you took because it was really good? The advice I took was, and it is so true, and it happens almost every time I'm painting, there comes a time, and you will know this too as an artist, that we look at our painting and we've worked so hard and we think, I don't like this. There, it's not working. I don't like it. But we're almost done with it. Oh, okay, I'll work a little bit more. Put one mark, one brush stroke, one different color. Boom! Mm. Have you had that experience? It, it transforms. It's okay. It's, I like it. I'm going to have it. <laughs> I'm going to have it. That's good advice. But that was someone told me that, wow. and it's true. So let's close with what advice would you give to a young or emerging artist? I, I would say paint, research, read, live art. Notice, notice the colors, notice designs everywhere. Make art the center part of your uh, awareness is what I would say. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. That is marvelous advice. Thank you, Kirby Kendrick, for spending some time with us today. I appreciate, I, I know you're doing art all the time, so thank you for taking a little time away <laughs> to spend with us. I appreciate that. It was and a pleasure. If, if you've enjoyed this um, video, Kirby also has a marvelous blog that you might want to check out. Oh, it's so, a website, too. It's on my website. It's on the website. Which is uh, kirbykendrick.com. There you have it. Thank you, Kirby Kendrick. Dot com. <laughs> and thanks for stopping by.